what can we say so far from this module and another module, the previous one? Well, actin and myosin do bind, and specifically the myosin head is responsible for binding to actin. We can say that ATP is hydrolyzed during contraction, that is when filaments are allowed to slide. And we can say that the myosin heads are a kind of cross bridge, and that's the terminology we use, a cross bridge between the long axis of the myosin or thick filament and the actin thin filaments. Okay, knowing that muscle contraction in any event is going to require free energy, studies of purified actin and myosin soon revealed a few things, and these are that the myosin thick filaments were capable of binding ATP and would actually hydrolyze ATP, although very slowly. Actin, on the other hand, had no such ATP hydrolyzing activity. So it looked like the myosin would be the site of ATP hydrolysis that would power contraction. The S1 fraction of the myosin monomer, the, the myosin heads, were the site of the ATP binding and hydrolysis. The S1 fraction was the only component of myosin that would hydrolyze ATP. And again, it was slow hydrolysis. To review then, these myosin monomers are slow ATP aces catalyzing ATP hydrolysis. If you do this experiment with the tail, you don't get any activity. In this illustration, we imagine that the myosin heads, which are the cross bridges to actin, must bind and unbind, and they actually must, in effect, walk along actin in order that the actin be drawn sliding along the myosin filament. So we have a cartoon here with a bit of actin and a chunk of myosin and a green head. And what we imagine must happen is that the myosin undergoes several stages in a cycle of conformational change that pulls the actin along. So let's see if this uh, diagram makes any sense. So we just saw that a, a myosin head bound to actin became unbound. That same myosin head just shifted in position, changed in, in shape, changed its conformation. And in its new conformation, it could bind actin again, but this time it bound an actin monomer further along the actin filament. The actin is drawn along the myosin because the myosin head changes conformation once more to the shape and conformation or angle, if you like, that we started with. So let's look at this one more time. If you imagine that every myosin head is doing this to actin, and it's not doing it in a synchronized fashion, it's doing this asynchronously, you can imagine lots of little myosin heads alternately grabbing onto actin, drawing it forward a little bit, letting go, and then quickly flipping back and grabbing actin in another position in order to make the actin filament slide towards the center, basically, of the myosin thick filament. Now, does this really happen? Yes, we have evidence that it does. This is a form of myosin in which one can actually capture in the electron microscope the myosin head in different conformations. So what you imagine here is that many electron micrographs were taken of myosin heads in various stages of conformation, and then the illustrations were organized in an order that made sense. Just to look at that head, it has at least five different conformations. It sits at five different angles, relatively speaking, to the myosin thick filament, which is shown horizontally at the bottom of each image. 